Hello, everybody. I'm Larry Ridley. Welcome to Madden 18 on EA Sports. Every wide receiver in the NFL wants to be a top target, and two players will be trying to be that today. It's Bryant's Cowboys going up against Beckham's Giants. For the call, let's send you out to the broadcast booth, where we'll join our commentators, Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. Thank you, Larry. Coming to you from just off the New Jersey Turnpike in East Rutherford. We are just about set for football on EA Sports from MetLife Stadium. This is the scene just before we came on air. This New York crowd fired up by the arrival of their G-men as they burst from the locker room. They're ready to go as the Giants get set to match up with the Dallas Cowboys. Hello, folks, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gaughan. And a moment ago, Larry gave us a look at the two number one receivers that will be facing off here. But you think it's more than just one-on-one. -on -one. Both these teams, they've got a number of pass-catching options. And I'm eager to see how both teams will attack the opposite defenses because is it going to be where they're going to be a dart-throwing team, throw it short and try and make plays that way? Or will the long ball be a part of it? But you're right, lots of options for both of these squads. The first-year kicker from tiny Southern Oregon, Aldrich Rosas, ready to get us started. And off we go from MetLife Stadium. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. The Dallas Cowboys got a big win last week, 38-14 all over Washington. Dak Prescott, you see him as he leads the offense out. And what was weird for Dak and company, they played in back-to-back -back Thursday games because they had the Thanksgiving game, and then they turned around the following week on Thursday. That is a bit of an oddity, isn't it? But how great is it that it's back-to-back -back Thursdays and it's a Thursday where you're not coming off of a short week. Right. Right? They actually got the full week just like it was a Sunday to Sunday game. But the Cowboys finally got some points on the board, right? They put 38 on Washington. They had scored less than 10 points in each of the previous three games. And think about it this way. Dak's first win without Ezekiel Elliott, which is very good for his confidence. And a tip of the cap. Darren McFadden announced his retirement from the NFL. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. Okay, there's a tone setter. First play from scrimmage. Stuff him in the backfield. You know what they were doing last night in the hotel room? <laughs> Visualizing exactly that. That's what they were thinking about. Making that play. Having leverage. Lower than the offensive lineman. Getting into the offensive backfield. Knocking someone down. Just what you said. Setting the tone early for this game. Jeez, you are fired up. When I see a play like that, I can't help it. Second down, Prescott. And some room to maneuver. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there as they move the chains. They run with Morris. Oh, good footwork on the span. Looking for an opening, not much there. He'll get it to the 39. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And the offensive starters for Dallas. In a league where guys really pride themselves on their toughness, Jason Witten is a model of durability. Has the longest consecutive game streak played by a non-kicker in the NFL. And how does he do it? He just has a force of will, loves to play the game, and finds his way out in the field and manages to play through just about any bump and bruise that comes along. They'll try to throw down Prescott, and he hits Jason Witten to tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Dak fighting his tight end, Witten, and the Cowboys have a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down.
Now it's Morris. And an alley to run. And he's brought down. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Charles, speaking of Alfred Morris, how about him last week? He got the band back together again, over 100 yards for the first time since 2015. Do you think that it's really a coincidence? What, it was that it was against, against his former, former team? team? <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, he put big numbers on. Had 125 yards on the ground. First time he'd gone over 100 since 2015, as you noted. And the second player of the history of the Washington-Dallas rivalry to run for over 100 yards for each of the two teams. Do you remember who did it before? I know because you told me, Dwayne Thomas. Exactly, who coined the great phrase in Super Bowl history. If it's the ultimate game, why do they play it every year? Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Smith. He'll get it to the 40. He broke a tackle there, but couldn't get much further. Three yards on the pickup there, and they've got it back to third and ten. And this defensive line will be looking to control the point of attack. And that's what they've done throughout this season. This is a terrific unit. They play together very, very well, and they don't permit big plays to happen. The seventh play now of this opening drive. This is third and long, though. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And who's got it? The Giants. Often on fumbles, you look at the guy who coughed it up and say, geez, what did he do? But hey, let's tip the cap to the defense here. Not a problem at all, my man. I'm not going to tip it. I'm going to doff my cap to him. Congratulations. Big time play. Knocking it free and creating something good for your team. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. He's going to be taken down right at about the 15-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. Now Manning throwing on second down. Throw left side complete to Ingram. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the 20 at the 18. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. From the gun on third down, Manning. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Ron Jones. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. The good old cover three defense, partner. When you start playing football as a safety, that's the first thing you're taught. Middle of the field, be as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, and break on the football when it's thrown, and pick it off, just as we saw there.
Now the Cowboys offense heads back onto the field. And they got across the 50 last time but fumbled and turned it over so they'll be looking to have a short term memory here Mr. Davis. Not only a short term memory but a whole lot better ball security <laughs> because if they take care of the ball continue to move it their chances of scoring some points they've got to feel pretty good about they thought they had things moving in the right direction last time fumbles. They don't just affect you on offense, they affect your overall team because now your defense has to make that stand up. Following the interception, here's Prescott. Room here to run. Finding room to the 20. And down inside the 15 he goes. And the play goes for 19 yards. Gives him a new set of downs. rolling as we hit the midway point of this first quarter. This is Morris. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held them to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Morris. And he'll get this one down to about the 10-yard line. He'll pick up only a yard there, and it'll leave him with a third and seven. The best defensive lineman. They play with great leverage so they can get low and not get bowled over by offensive linemen. They have excellent hands. They can throw people off on a play. We just saw a great example of a really good run stop by a guy playing the defensive tackle position. They have five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked by Darian Thompson. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. Here's the giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. to about the 29, just shy of the 30. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. and the intended receiver at its third and short. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Defense has to stand tall here. Third and one. Hey, hey, right. hey, 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 hey. Throwing is Manning. Over the middle complete. It's King. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber 
to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taking with the defense will give him. this up to about the 40. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. Carry now for Paul Perkins. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. That O-line, they cleared a big hole there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to linebacker spot, the secondary spot getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. On first down, back to Perkins. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. And there's a run to be happy with. Good, solid yardage. He'll take that any time you hand the ball to a back. See if they stay on the ground for second down. Now they'll throw it with Manning. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. There he goes inside the 30. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. When you run a screen pass really well, you got to like the look of it because so many parts come together to make it work well. The offensive linemen where they're faking people out, the back slipping out there, catching the football, then all of them going together as one unit downfield, a really nice pickup. Now the offense lining up first and ten. Manning going to throw. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. On second down, here's Manning. And he's got his man on the out route. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Play number nine set to come here on the drive on third and two. They'll try to pick it up with Perkins, and he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. He needed two, he got one, and that's going to leave him with fourth down at a yard. How about the fellas with the stars on the side of their helmets rising up on defense? We always hear about the Cowboys rushing offense. Their rush defense is pretty good as well, I think, because they're so cohesive. Defensive line linebackers really work well together. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker Aldrich Rosas for the field goal try. This from 36 yards out. And the kick by Rosas is good. And the Giants are off now to a 3-0 lead. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. 
That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. To the field goal. Here's Rosas to kick it away. Here comes Ryan Switzer to return it. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. So just a lone field goal in this first quarter of play. It's a three-point game here early. Back to MetLife Stadium in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. They're looking at a second and short yardage to start things out. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Here's Morris. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. They go play action here on first down. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. And now here's a carry heading left. And they'll get him down here at about the 42. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early.
On play action, Prescott. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Jason Pierre-Paul able to get him for a loss of about three. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. play here will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack it's third and long Prescott now from the 50 oh he's got some breathing room and avoids the contact by sliding that one good for 16 and the drive will continue seven-yard line. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And the offense there, the O-line, everybody really on offense, they were just manhandled at the point of attack. Yeah, you could pretty much call them all out, couldn't you? And almost by name, right? That was a very tough sequence for the offensive line, but how about that defensive front creating a new line of scrimmage and creating a lost yardage possibility? his way down to about the 35-yard line. Give him two yards that time, and it's going to leave him with a third and 11 situation. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam to the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. And that is incomplete. Well, they're slinging it. And then there's one you got to put a timer on, huh? I mean, that one came in hot. That yeah, came in hot, but overthrown out of his reach and incomplete. And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. And that will wind up just short. He had it on line. It ran out of gas at the end. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, he gets everything he could into this one. The trajectory's good. It's definitely on line. It just needs a little more oomph behind it. And it'll wind up falling just shy of the crossbar. And the Giants ready to come out now. And a methodical drive last time, but they couldn't get that knockout blow. They had to settle for three. But you got to like what they've been doing along the way, right? It's almost like the body blows, the setup punch. As you said, they didn't get the knockout blow here, but that doesn't mean it can't come later in the game on another possession. And the defense on the other side... Maybe a little gas, right? Yeah, a little tired. And if nothing else, they just feel relieved getting off field only giving up three. They don't exactly feel like they've handled the offense. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. Now Manning. And he'll toss this one incomplete. Seeing no options, he throws it away. While we've got a moment here, Frank Gore moved up two spots in his game Sunday against Jacksonville this last week, Charles. He's now top five rushers all time in the NFL. That's absolutely amazing when you think about it. The longevity of a career, the production of a career, and now you stop, I don't care who you are, you start thinking legacy. Right? And think about who he moved past. He moved past Jerome Bettis, Hall of Famer. LaDainian Tomlinson, Hall of Famer. If you're Frank Gore, 
you're thinking your credentials are going to be up for the Hall of Fame. Absolutely. Start measuring for that jacket. He's at 13,697 yards. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. The Giants on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and four. Shotgun now for Manning. And incomplete. A disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. The name of the game is always on defense. Put pressure on the quarterback. And that's exactly what they've done today. It looks like they've got him a little bit rattled. That would have been the second interception in the first half. The fourth-year man from LSU, Brad Wing, to punt it away as he's on a punt for the first time this afternoon. This is away and a very good kick angled for the sidelines. And that is much too long. That's into the end zone for a touchback. Our focus now moving to Des Bryant as he heads back out there. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. on the play back at his own 19 yard line it's of a yard there and now second down we think brandon i like the intensity this defense is showing right here in these first few drives they're not just holding the line because they're doing their job but they're doing more than that aren't they they're getting a nice push into the offensive backfield and a great example right there for the loss on the tackle Second down throw for Prescott. And this one complete to Witten over the middle. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Now Prescott. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Now the seventh-year man, Chris Jones, on to kick as he's on to punt for Dallas. Pressure comes, and the Giants block it. Uh, so much for pinning him really deep. Short punt could have pinned him inside the 10. Now great field position the other way. It's never good when you're punting the ball and your eyes see the ball go back behind you. <laughs> no. In however form, whether it's over your head or to the side, never good. Now it becomes a race to get to the football so they don't pick it up and take it all the way. Here's the giant offense now as they get ready to take over here. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And he'll take this down for about four yards down to the 15. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. Manning to throw on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. They haven't made much of this great starting field position they had. Here's third and six. Working from the gun, Manning. And this is going to be incomplete. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. And Rosas puts this one through, and that will double their lead as it's up to six. So the drive stalls out, but they are able to put three points on the board. Yeah, just a yard or two shorter than an extra point, but no problems converting there. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. And out now come the Cowboys. Continues to be nowhere to run. He's bottled up again at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And when you're running the football, one thing you don't want to see is a big boy coming up there and swallow you whole in those D tackles and nose tackles. No, you're actually counting on your big boys to protect you from them. But on that play, the defensive tackle had the leverage, and he won the battle. No gain, correct? No gain. Play action now. Prescott. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to spring the tight end free downfield for the completion. As they run left side. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 11 more on that one and another first down. Well, so much for him being bottled up throughout the day. Finally finds a way to break through and get a really nice gain. The defense had felt great about what they had going. Now they've got to turn their attention to getting it back in that direction. Can they bottle him up again? Because I'd say after that run, confidence is pretty high for him. Check, check. 
Prescott looks to throw on first. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Ten more there and another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Play fake here on first down. Over the middle to Smith. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield, and oftentimes it's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. gain 13 yards that time and another first down for so many years i was convinced it was a myth you know because you always hear about the smaller running back oh he gets lost you can't find him and sometimes that's part of his genius but it's true you get behind big offensive linemen the defensive line guys trying to find him trying to peek around people to see him and he gets lost but this guy gets lost in a good way for his offense picking up big yardage Prescott on first down. Going right side. He has Winton. And he'll get it here to the 10-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. I know when you got a top tight end like this, you want to get him involved. But when you do, you're hoping for more than that. You certainly are. You've got to try and get him some space where he can make a play downfield or at least an opportunity for some rack yardage, right? That run after catch. Nine yards still remaining here to pick up the first on second down. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to East Rutherford, but first this time out. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, we'll send you to Orlando and Larry Ridley as he'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. But no touchdown. These guys need to give Larry some touchdowns to talk about. Things are too easy for him right now back in the studio. Come on, guys. Help the man out. Give him something to talk about. Second down, Prescott out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. That'll be a loss of four yards on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and cause a nice play for lost yardage. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for five to this point. This is going to be third and 13. Prescott from the gun. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. And now the Giants will stop play as they take a timeout defensively. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action.
And the Cowboys will call on Dan Bailey here from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And Bailey able to knock it through. And they are on the board, trailing now at six to three. Certainly their offense has sputtered here a little bit in the first half as they finally do get on the board, but they only have three. Well, at least it eases the frustration a bit, doesn't it? Be able to get some points on the board, feel a little bit better about themselves as they go into the locker room and try and regroup. Now, after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This one taken from the seven. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. We get a look at Sterling Shepard as he and the rest of the offense march out into place. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers will tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. and 10. Here's Manning. Throwing the slant pattern here complete. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout as he'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So the offensive unit called the T.O., and now we are ready to resume play. Offense in a good spot here, second and two. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Neutral zone infraction, defense. And he got a little aggressive too early. And he did, wanting that quick takeoff as the ball was snapped, but... I think sometimes those big guys on offense, they're pretty cagey too, right? They make those little sudden moves or those little subtle moves that get you to jump. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. From the gun, it's Manning. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. 
Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Fresh set of downs here. From the gun, Manning. Open man right side is Ingram. A gain of six there on first. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Side complete to Ingram. And they'll be inside the 25 now at the 24. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. He's a rookie, and you don't want to get hung up on the word potential. But when you see him make catches like that, you keep thinking to yourself, he's good now. He's got a chance to be great with plenty of work. Now a signal and a timeout call as it comes with nine seconds to go in this first half of play. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And the kick by Rosas is good. And the lead will increase to six now. It's nine to three. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. Not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though this offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, they've still been able to come away with points. To the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to come out is going to cost him five as he's taken down right at the 20. Time running short here. They'll simply take a knee, and that should do it for half number one. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front. As we'll send you down the coast to Orlando, where we check in with our friend Larry Ridley and the EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon. We'll see if I can get through this without being skipped. As we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Giants are happy to be in front right now and just want to play two more solid quarters. The Cowboys just want to come out after the half and claw their way back into the game. Offense on the field now after the INT. Prescott's under pressure and throws the pick. Thompson's reading the play and comes away with it, ending the draw. Cowboys here, they have it at the 47. Pierre Paul's got to take down the QB here. This ends up with a short loss in yardage. 
first and 10. Manning's on target here, and he'll make it out to the 34-yard line. So that's a wrap for us. We'll head back now to MetLife Stadium for the start of the second half. So both teams have their marching orders, and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Giants' offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. They have the lead, now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had an ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. On play action, now Manning. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Well, you know, we're in December, so I feel incumbent upon me to ask you about the MVP race and where you sit right now. Wentz, Brady, somebody else, what are you thinking? You remember early in the season how strongly I felt about Alex Smith, but with the way the Chiefs have played lately, losing all these games in a row, he no longer is a viable candidate. So you're exactly right. Carson Wentz in Philadelphia, he's got to be one of the prime guys that you're looking at. Powered them to 10 wins already. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Cowboys have recovered. So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. Now, both of these defenses have been stifling these last few drives offensively. Just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. The Giants on third down, just one for five to this point. This will be third and five. So the fumble recovery, and now Manning. And he will go down, a Cowboys sack. Malik Collins able to drop it for a loss of 12, and it'll be fourth down. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. Here's Brad Wing now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And he'll get this away into the icy winter air. 
Fair catch called for and taken right near the 30-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt, and the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And he'll be tackled at about the 35. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you, if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. they got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. Prescott now on second down. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. Jason Witten, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. But pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Prescott from the gun on third. Incomplete. He had his hands on it but couldn't pick it. But it's now fourth down. Now we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. And remember, he had his first punt blocked. He steps into this one, and this is a rocket. And this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. And New York set to take the field. And I would say they went three and out last time, but actually they didn't even get to three and out. Still a strange decision to us here in the booth. Yeah, let's hope they don't go one and out, but maybe, possibly, let's try and, try and think with them here. Try to play field position, maybe. Turn the ball over, put it in the hands of their defense. Who knows? You're a nice man. <laughs> On the run, Darqua. He'll get about three as he's taken down at the 23. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. Operating from the gun, Manning. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Giants on third down. They've had their troubles, just one for six. They're up against a third and one situation. They'll run it now out of the gun. A great effort there to shed the contact, and it helps him pick up the first. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. It just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Oh, 
Now a play fake. Manning. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. And some options here for the offense on second and two. On play action, it's Manning. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Demarcus Lawrence in there to bring him down for a loss of seven. He was trying to keep his eyes downfield. Nobody came open. He was trying to do everything that he had been taught, right? Every bit of the technique. But if no one's open, there is no technique except make sure you hold on to the ball as you go to the ground when you're getting sacked. The Giants on third down, lacking much success, just two for seven to this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, Manning. A dump off to Vereen. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. It's a gain of five, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. The punter wing is on as he sends this one away. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down to close to the goal line at the one-yard line. And our focus shifts here to Alfred Morris. And after a sluggish start, he's really bounced back. The numbers bear that out. And you're a baseball guy, partner. How many at-bats over the course of a baseball season? Oh, boy. Four about in three, a game. Yeah, about the four in a four game. Four times 162. 350 or so, right? Sometimes it takes a while for a guy to get going. That's my point. It's not the first few carries. You don't worry about that. As they go along, get that guy lathered up, get those blocking assignments down. Those two-yard gains turn into bigger gains as the game moves along. They'll start it on the ground with Morris. And now where are they going to mark him here? Well, they say he did get back to the one-yard line, but that could have easily been two points the other way. The defense just stopped the offense for no gain, but that was really a football 101 call by both sides. The defense crowded the line expecting the run, and the offense did exactly what they were supposed to, try and wedge a little bit of room and get out of the shadow of their own goal line. They didn't do that. Now if you trust your quarterback, you might take a shot on play action. And he is met and taken down. Morris is tackled for the safety. And you know the man who sat in my chair the last few years, he has a theory. These plays, these safeties, they're so rare. Maybe they should be worth more than two, maybe four points. I think he's got a great point. I really do, Brandon. But I would go ahead and up it to six. I'm a former defender. Oh. To me, that's like scoring a touchdown. Easy now. I'll go four. I don't know about six. Come on, come on. Come up to six. <laughs> a lot of points. And remember, following the safety, you give the football up as well. And they free kick it from the 20 now. Oh, he takes it in. Doesn't let it bounce. He takes it at the two. And here comes the Giants offense back out onto the field. This crew had to punt last time they had the ball, but when you've got a lead like this, you can tend to play the field position game. You are to an extent, especially if you like your defense, because you have the lead, you've been controlling the game. But why put them in a tougher spot? You want to get out there and get something done on offense and maybe take command of this game yourself. Now out of the gun. 
And he'll be dropped at the 30. And a shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Second and five. They'll run again now with Darquan. <laughs> get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there and it'll lead to a new set of downs. How many times do we say in this game that speed kills and it does it in so many different ways. In this case, you got a back who's quick and shifty. Can make moves, make people miss, but also gets to and through a hole before it can close down. That's some of the benefits of that speed, not just outrunning people in the secondary. That led to a really nice game. And oh, a good hit there and knocked down hard right at the line of scrimmage. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. That was a really nice play, be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got to he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. And filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. Now they'll throw it with Manning. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. Demarcus Lawrence. He's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. And that was just absolute perfect man coverage. Nowhere for them to go with the football led to a sack. That's really difficult to do in today's NFL with all these gazelles running around that you're trying to cover in the secondary. Third and long for the Giants and Eli following the sack. To throw is Manning. Got his man complete over the middle. It's King. And he takes it down deep into enemy territory. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. Giants touchdown. Orleans Darquan taking it in. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 15 now. A drive that time of six plays. And it was finished off by a touchdown by the New York Giants.
Rosas now to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The Cowboys offense heading back out and ready to go again. And last time they surrendered the safety, we know they don't want to do that again. That is just one of those oddities in scoring that we get. And it's just so strange to see that go up on the board. And then you got to make sure that that doesn't happen to your team again. They've got to take care of the ball. But boy, it juices up the defense. Oh, without a doubt. That's a great way to score some points. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. First down, Prescott throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Cole Beasley, the intended target, and it's second down. That pass falling to the ground gives me a second to look back to November. Offensive and defensive rookies of the month, Charles. It was Alvin Kamara offensively, and then Reuben Foster, the old Alabama player, defensively. I'm going to start with Reuben Foster because... He was a high draft pick, ended up going in the first round, but didn't go as high as we expected due to some lingering shoulder issues at Alabama. But guess what? What a great... And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. That's his second sack of the game. The best defensive ends, they do their homework as much as offensive guys do. They know how to beat the offensive lineman across from them, what moves they need to do to set them up. This guy's been pretty good at it all game long. They'll need a big play here. Will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack? It's third and long. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. He finds his target, Terrence Williams. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. They'll wind up with 17 on that one, but they're still a bit short here for fourth. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. Out now comes the Cowboys punter. Remember, though, he did have one blocked earlier. And he gets this away, and look at this. This is a good one. And problems spreading to the punt team now. This one goes all the way into the end zone on the fly, so that'll come back to the 20. And New York set to take the field. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? I mean, they score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because... What you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, you think you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. Still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? Throwing on first down is Manning. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he takes it all the way down. 28-yard line. A big play there on the catch and run. 52 yards. Coaches really don't care from what position they get this, but run after the catch ability, rack ability, is often the difference between winning and losing and changing field position. Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short gain. Here's Darkwa. 
And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. He lost two there, and it's third down. Well, partner, I guess sometimes it's just a matter of philosophy. Some say run until they absolutely stop you, and others say, well, when you think they're about to stop you, fool them a little bit. I guess they should have tried to fool them on that play. The Giants on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and 11. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Welcome back now here in East Rutherford. It's the Giants with the football and also the lead as we get set to start quarter number four. The Giants on third down. They've converted a third of their opportunities, three for nine. This is third and 11. Play action, Manning. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Demarcus Lawrence in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. On fourth down, off goes Manning, and on comes the Giants kicker, Aldrich Rosas, for the field goal try. This to make it a three-score game late. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And that will extend their lead even further. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. To the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. And from back there, a wise move. He'll just sit on this one, and it'll come out to the 25. So out come the Cowboys now as their offense gets set to take over. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. A first down throw for Prescott. And some space here. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and that'll make it second and short. Second down, they need less than a yard to pick up the first. They'll run it now out of the gun, and he'll be brought down right around the 37. Give him three yards and a fresh set of downs. 
Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there, pick up the first down. Looks like the defense in press coverage here. On first and 10, Prescott. And this is caught by Witten, the tight end. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve, throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. the shotgun it's Prescott completes it to Jason Witten that one goes for 24 yards and he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end a guy that you can line up anywhere in the slot out wide in tight doesn't really matter because he has such great skills you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense and there he was in the slot for the catch So here we go, first and 10 now. Prescott now. That is caught inside the five. That one goes for 24 yards. Defensively here, you've got the cushion, but back-to-back -back pretty big pass plays there. Bend but don't break, but are they bending too much? I think that they are. To me, it'd be like playing basketball and you put up a token press. Make sure you get up there and make them eat up some time. Make it a little bit of resistance so they can't just run it right down your throat. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Smith. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. Second down throw for Prescott. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Dalvin Tomlinson with a great push up front. He picks up the sack and a loss of eight. Second goal, last thing you need to do is get pushed backwards to take a sack. But he couldn't find anywhere to go with the football. Had to eat it and ended up on the ground. Big play here will Dak and the Cowboys after the sack. It's third and long. <laughs> to throw is Prescott. And that is caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. Bryce Butler, a 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Cowboys cut into that lead. Sometimes when I see these types of plays executed, I think of basketball. Guys boxing other guys off to go out and get a rebound. And he got the rebound right there. But the defense was really placed well. Yeah, they were right there. I mean, that's where it's really tough for a defender. When you're in the right spot, you're draped on the guy catching the ball, yet he still comes down with it. Dan Bailey now for the extra point. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. So that drive 
in total eight plays. And it culminates in a Dallas touchdown. Bailey now to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And now trotting back out with the rest of his offensive mates, the big tight end. And a bounce back here for him after a slow start. And sometimes that's how it goes with tight ends. Those catches in their games, they can go in waves at that position. And you get so locked into stopping them that you think, okay, hey, look at that. We've got it. We've held him down. <laughs> the best ones, you really don't hold down for an entire game. They're going to get their catches. Your job is to keep them from being big-time catches that break you down totally. They'll run with Darquan. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Brand is all about pace and tempo now for them. They've got the advantage, so I'm going to put musical terms for you. You don't want to go prestissimo. That's too quick, too lively, right? But you also don't want to slow it down too much. You don't want to go lento. What you really want to be is moderato. Uh, nice and even, uh, nice and steady. Get those gains and close out the game. I think that chicken parm from last night's gone to your head. <laughs> And not a whole lot doing there as he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Only a yard of the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. Throwing his Manning on third down. And that is incomplete. Here's Brad Wing now. He's been terrific so far. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. This is taken around the 12. And he'll be out of bounds, getting it across the 25. Boy, he wasn't too far from breaking that officially. Give him 15, and out will come the offense as they take over. Here's the Dallas offense now, heading back out onto the field. Prescott on first down. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he'll be brought down somewhat awkwardly here and a late flag as well. I think this one's going to be a face mask. Foul. Face mask. Defense. So they'll take the yardage and tack on 15 more for the face mask. Talk about a play that absolutely costs you in the end. Just trying to do your job, right? Trying to get him on the ground. Next thing you know, they'll march off another 15 against your squad. Prescott looks to throw on first. And his throw is going to be incomplete. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. They'll run it now out of the gun. And oh, he's 
going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Official foul. Face mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. it to the 30-yard line here, right at the 30. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Second down, Prescott. Caught left side, Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Nine yards on the pick up there, and it keeps the drive alive. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. So the offense has it first and 10. Prescott yet again. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense. So give them the yardage on the pass and half the distance to the goal line. Because they're inside the 30. So now you don't march off the full 15, right? You have half the distance to the goal. In any event, that's precious real estate given up. So the chains are on their sides. It's first and goal from the six. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little early. and goal defense with their backs against the wall to the air again Prescott toward the center of the field but it's incomplete the man with over a thousand catches Jason Witten the intended receiver and now it's second down I'm gonna need some help with this one how did he miss it wide open in the end zone He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. Now Prescott. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Holding offense. Down in this one, they needed that score, but they'll have to hold at least for the time being. You're exactly right. Points that they had to have, as you said, they have to regroup now and see if they can get them another way. Going to give this time to the tailback. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. 
11 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it third and goal. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. And I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. Prescott on third and goal. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. Did they maybe play that too safely on third down? I know you don't want to just throw a ball blindly downfield, but that didn't help them a whole lot. I think they probably said if it's open, take the shot. If not, get something safe because we do have fourth down to try and pick it up. The field goal doesn't help. They're going to go for the six here on fourth and goal. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And this is intercepted, but they'll say out of bounds. So very close to a turnover there in the end zone. They can't hook up here on the fourth down pass attempt. And the Giants are going to get the football back. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now really hoping for a turnover. Side, but nothing there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he'll give it here to his running back. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves him with five more. Third and five now. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Open man right side is Ingram. And able to get this across the 20 before going out of bounds. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. Oh, and what a play on special teams here. This is going to be down inside the five, all the way down at the two-yard line. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And last time they were very fortunate, this offense. They went for it on four, turned it over in their own territory. But the other guys held up. They didn't give up any points. So how about the guy with the number one headset on the sidelines, the head coach? <laughs> that was planned going into it, not necessarily to not get the first down or to, to have the defense have to hold but it But he up. trusted his defense. Trusted his defense very much, and I think that that's how he's going to play this game. Go for it. Be aggressive because I've got the wild bunch backing me up over here on my own side. Now we'll see what his offense can do. And he'll take this up to about the seven or eight-yard line. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And that run, that changes the whole mentality about the drive right there. They were starting on their own two-yard line. They just wanted enough space to pump the football successfully. 
Now they're talking about putting together a drive. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Three yards to go here on second down. Throwing. Prescott. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. They give him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. Here's Prescott. the mark incomplete. And on second and ten now. Prescott to throw it. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Jason Pierre-Paul in there to drop him as the clock continues to roll. Third and long for Prescott. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Giants are close to finishing off this football game. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. the Giants and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency move the ball at least a few times on offense get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field yeah just something to build off of that's what they're looking for here really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's going to bowl his way into the end zone for a Giants touchdown. Orleans Darquois, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Giants add on to their lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. And that one makes this a 19-point game. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone.
Rosas now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And now here come the Cowboys. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take into next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do that and coaches want to. I remember one time I was on a team and we were losing late in a game like this and you knew it was lost. It was over, right? And a coach called a running play and pretty much said to everyone, I want to see something executed well before we get out of here. And that was the message to the team. Just something to build Just on. Just something to build on, get it done, and maybe we can look at that and say, we'll get better as we go forward. Now Prescott, man open left side, it's Williams. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Prescott. And that's incomplete. He was looking for Alfred Morris that time, and it's third and short. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden a secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. Here it's third and two. Now flags fly in, and one of the Cowboys looked like he got going a little Post early. Offense. The Cowboys on third down. They've converted just twice and have had plenty of opportunities. This is third and seven. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked, he's known for his hands defensively, but instead it just brings up fourth down. Oh man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play right in his hands, unable to come down with it. But a sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. The Cowboys will go. Prescott. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And this is going to be incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The Giants offense now gets ready to head back onto the field. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand, and that's all they're going to want to do now. They'll put someone back deep just in case something goes haywire. But all in all, take the snap, kneel down, and, and shake hands. Yes, get out of there. And to give this time to the tailback. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. And Charles, I think when the schedule comes out, all teams, no matter where they're predicted to finish, talk about protecting your home turf. They were able to do that here in this one. Similar to a tennis match, right? Not letting them break your serve. That way you hold on to it. They got it done, and they feel very good about that victory.
So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. The Giants are winners as we say so long from MetLife Stadium.